okay? Say something like uh, hernia surgery. Uh, this is usually not life-threatening, but uh, very disturbing for the patient. And as uh, you may know, um, uh, the life disturbance for the patient really depends on the location of the hernia. If the hernia is in the belly or in the legs or, and so on. And suppose uh, that there is some place with only one hospital that treats this uh, kind of patients. And um, uh, there is a, a stream of, of patients, incoming patients with this uh, condition and they need treatment. And of course, as we all know, usually there are lines, uh, waiting lines uh, for uh, these patients to be treated. So as I told you at the beginning, yeah, okay, I'm seeing that there's some problem with my microphone. Um, Alex, can you hear me? You cannot? Okay. So sh should I go back? The, the, there was a problem with the beginning of my, uh, of my talk? Alex? Alex, should I start over? No? Okay, anyways, um, so yeah, so, so we have this incoming stream of, uh, of uh, patients that uh, need treatment and um, they are different. The, we have a heterogeneous uh, population of, of patients. And of course, the natural question is now uh, who to treat first or how to uh, allocate, uh, how to allocate uh, priority to these patients. So, well, the, <laughs> Intuition and also uh, the CMU rule, if you want to be precise, tells us that, uh, I will of course give more details on that, but uh, tells us that it makes a lot of sense to treat the patients with most severe condition, uh, to give them priority over those with uh, mild uh, condition. Um, so this is all very trivial and very intuitive. Suppose now that in addition to this hospital, that uh, we can assume that this is a, a public hospital. Um, now there is a new hospital dedicated just to treat hernia somewhere, and this is a private hospital. So if a patient wants to get treat, uh, being, be treated there, he needs to pay some uh, amount of fee. And suppose that the fee is constant regardless of your condition. So now the patients, they have the choice whether to go to the public hospital or to go to the uh, uh, private hospital. If they go to the uh, public hospital, they have to wait. Uh, of course, as we said, depending on uh, the condition. And if they go to the private hospital, they need to pay a fee, but suppose that the private hospital is so efficient that there is virtually no wait if uh, a patient uh, uh, chooses to get the treatment there. So now the patients, they have this dilemma and some of them uh, may choose to go to the public one. Some of them may choose to go to the private one. And as a matter of fact, they make these de decisions based on their condition. And an interesting question would be, okay, what would be the equilibrium there? Will we have some kind of threshold equilibrium, all those with some condition uh, or above some uh, condition uh, will choose to go to the public or maybe to go to the private one and so on. So apparently the uh, equilibrium behavior is very strange here. We have um, uh, the probability of getting treatment in the public hospital as a function of the condition is, is non even monotone, okay? And I will of course go uh, over the details uh, in the next slides. So this is some background that, uh, 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 or also uh, even the bottom line uh, for you to be able to follow uh, uh, hopefully a, a bit more efficiently. Okay, but I will start from the very beginning and I'm assuming no, uh, or almost no uh, previous knowledge. So I'll start with a very basic model for strategic queuing. 
which is the one presented by Edelson and Hidelband in 75. And the basic question is to Q or not to Q. Let me go very quickly over the model. So we have a single server <clears throat> in this queue, uh, and we have an incoming arrival process of uh, customers, which is Poisson at Lambda. And the service is exponential with some parameter mu. And let us assume uh, it's not necessary, but let us assume that mu is greater than lambda for, for now. So, uh, so far we, we just have an M and one Q, right? Let us assume that the service uh, policy is something like first come first served, or if you want to be more general, any work on serving or non anticipating service, service logic. But of course you can just assume first come first serve and that's it. Now for the economic parameters. So we have the service valuation uh, value of R. So this is the value that you get once you get the service from this facility. Another way to think about this parameter is the cost of the alternative. So suppose that you cannot go into this or you choose not to use this queue, but of course, you, you still need a service, so you go to the alternative, as in the case that I told you about the private hospital, and this is the fee that you need to pay for the, for the private hospital. So if you want to keep this, the model simple, you can just assume that you get a reward of being treated by this uh, by a public hospital or this queue, you get a reward of R. This is what you save by not going uh, to the uh, private hospital, okay? So you can think about this parameter R in, in both ways. And of course, it's exactly the same. And uh, the second economic parameter is the cost per unit of time that you spend in this system, that you spend waiting and also being treated. So uh, also during your service. And we assume that this parameter is uh, this rate that you accumulate the, the, the cost is constant. We have linear waiting cost and the parameter equals C. So if, if we go back to the example, you can assume that C reflects somehow the condition or, or the life disturbance that is caused by this hernia condition. Okay, so those that suffer more, um, um, they have a higher parameter C, and those who suffer less, they have a lower parameter C. Now you, you may see the connection between the C mu rule and what I told you about treating those with more severe condition so some facts about MM1 for those, uh, I will go over this very, very quickly, just uh, some reminder. So the utilization level, uh, we denote it as everyone else by raw. And you can think about it as the incoming work per unit of time. So per unit of time, you have Lambda customers arriving. Each one of them brings an amount of work of one over mu. So this is the incoming work per unit of time. And uh, of course, the very basic uh, thing to ask is what is the expected waiting time? So I will not go over all this uh, in detail, but uh, as, you, as you know, you can think about this as a geometric sum. Um, and this sum converges to one of the mu times uh, one, minus, minus, one minus rho. So you can think about this as taking the service time, which is one over mu and inflate it by a factor of one over one minus O. But another question, maybe uh, sometimes more interesting, is what is the total, I mean, by, by total, I mean the social error waiting time due to a marginal arrival. So suppose that uh, there is one customer that now needs to decide whether or not to join this, this queue. If he joins, of course, he needs to wait, and he needs to wait to wait the amount that we just mentioned, the one over mu times y minus so. But due to this arrival, more customers, those uh, in the first come first serve, those who will arrive after him, will have to wait more uh, compared to the situation where he would choose not to, to join. Okay, so now uh, the question is, what is the aggregate uh, extra waiting time due to this single arrival? And well, the, the, the answer is uh, quite simple if you uh, just think about it in the right way. So the answer is the waiting time of a customer with zero priority. Zero priority, I mean by zero, uh, I mean also with uh, preemption. So, so consider a customer that 
uh, uh, it doesn't get any treatment or any service while there are some other customers there. So the only situation where this customer is getting service is if the server would have been idle otherwise. Okay, so in this way, this customer is not interrupting anyone else. Okay, so it is transparent, transparent uh, uh, to all the other customers. So there is no harm caused to others. So he somehow bears all the extra waiting that a, a normal customer would uh, have inflict on himself and also on, on the others. Okay, and there is kind of a simple way to think about uh, the, the waiting time of such a customer. I will not go into details, but it appears that you need to take this waiting time and inflate it by another factor of one over y minus so. So, uh, as I told you, the most basic uh, model of, of decisions in queues is to consider the unobservable case of this model where customers make the decision whether or not to join this queue, but without observing the uh, queue length. So what happens is that when a customer decides whether or not to join, he only considers the uh, expected waiting time that uh, he might uh, suffer, multiplies it by C, this is the cost of waiting, compares it to R, and then make the decision. But the thing is that the waiting time depends not only on the decision of whether or not this particular customer joins or not, but also by the decisions uh, made by other customers. So what we have here is a non-cooperative game, a cooperative game, and we need to think about a, a situation uh, uh, that we call a Nash equilibrium. So if we assume just for simplicity that the reward is greater than the waiting had anyone else uh, uh, will not join the book. So if I'm the only one using this facility, I should join. But uh, if everyone uses the, this facility, everyone chooses to join, well, I better not join. So this is the interesting case. And in that case, we don't have any pure equilibria. So there is no equilibria where everyone joins or everyone books. But what we have is an Nash equilibrium, some probability strictly between zero and one. Uh, where if everyone chooses to join with this probability, one is indifferent between, between joining or not joining, so he can as well use the same probabilities everyone else, and uh, what we get is a symmetric equilibrium where all use the same strategy and no one has an incentive to deviate from this strategy. Okay, if we want to look at this graphically, we can look at the individual cost, with the, which is the, the waiting cost, okay, given that a proportion of P customers decide to join, well, of course, we have the thing of the uh, rival Poisson process, so rho becomes P times rho, and we have this increasing function as a function of P, the probability of joining of the individual cost. We can add to this graph the weight, the, 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 the reward from, from, from uh, service, or the cost of the alternative, if you may, uh, if you like to think about it that way. And we see that as long as uh, R is greater than this individual cost, one better join. And as long as uh, the, the, the other way is uh, uh, R is uh, less than the, the, the waiting cost, so one better book. This is the only point, the point right here, where one is indifferent between joining and not joining. And this is what defines actually the, uh, the equilibrium joining probability PE, denoted by PE. Okay, this is very simple, but um, we get a very uh, problematic situation. What happens is that everyone is indifferent between joining and not joining. So if you think about this facility, the service facility, that potentially could generate a reward of size R at the rate of mu per unit of time, we end up with actually zero social welfare. So all this reward that some customers get is overwhelmed by the individual cost, the cost of waiting. So this is a kind of a tragic situation. You can think about it in terms of the tra tra tragedy of the, of the commons uh, in the economic uh, uh, perspective. Anyways, this is the situation. So it's very natural to think about uh, social optimization. So uh, let us uh, administrate the admission to this, to this facility centrally 
And let us assume for now that uh, there is a some central planner that can tell everyone what to do or what strategy to use, and everyone obeys uh, this, uh, this uh, suggestion. So the problem of the central planner's objective is actually to find the uh, joining probability P that maximizes the net reward per unit of time or, or per customer in, the, in that case. Of course, it's the same. Um, and of course, if you uh, think about it a little bit, you will understand that this joining probability should be less than PE, less than the one that we just uh, defined as the equilibrium one. Uh, and of course, this is the term for the waiting time as a function of P. And the more interesting thing about this is the first order condition. So what we get from this first order condition is that R should be equal to C over mu inflated by one minus P rho squared. So let me remind you, this is exactly the waiting cost that uh, a zero priority customer would have suffered um, given that the joining probability of all the others is P. So if you want to think about this, we get that um, as opposed to the equilibrium uh, case, what happens now is that the reward should be equal not to the individual cost, but to the social marginal cost, okay? And this is what uh, we get. Uh, of course, you can take all this and split it into the individual cost plus something. This something is called the externalities. Anyways, if, you, if we add this to the graph, we get this uh, curve, the curve here that uh, symbolizes the marginal social cost, okay, the same term that we had in the previous slide. And as we showed, there is a positive gap between the two curves, the individual and the marginal social cost. And the first order condition is met here at that point. Uh, this is what uh, de 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 describes the socially optimal joining probability. And as you can see, every one of the customers who join now, they have some strictly positive net utility. This is the difference between R and the individual cost. If you multiply this by PS, you will get the size of the uh, socially optimal social welfare. Okay, of course it's greater than zero, right? Okay, very well. Now a natural question is how to regulate this system, how to make customers, selfish customers, to behave not in according to the equilibrium strategy, but according to what we want uh, as central planners, which is the socially optimal one. So of course the most basic way to do this is to impose some entry fee. This entry fee will deter some customers from joining, and then we can reduce PE to PS. Uh, this is uh, suggested, of course, uh, uh, in, the, in the original paper. Um, but so, uh, and, uh, another way, uh, much more clever, but I won't get into any details of this, is uh, auctioning priority. So let customers pay uh, an amount of their choice, and that will determine their priority. Apparently, what happens is that the effective arrival rate to this system, if you apply this kind of mechanism, is exactly PS, okay? This is a very interesting paper, I really recommend it, but I, I won't get into any details of this. Another uh, way is a uh, random entry fee that uh, Moshe and I uh, uh, suggested in a paper in uh, 2018, Major in Science. Um, but all of uh, these three uh, 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 mechanisms, they involve money transfer. So someone has to pay something to someone else. Okay, so here in the entry fee, there is a, some bouncer at, at the door, right? And you need to pay in order to get in. Here, so you need to maintain a collection system and so on. There are more costs uh, involved in that. And also sometimes if you think about the medical context, in public hospitals, is, 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 is in, in some countries, right? Is unethical to charge for, for priority or to charge for entry at all. Okay, you, you, you need to accept everyone and you cannot even prioritize, if you think about this method by prioritizing by auctioning, you cannot get better treatment or, 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 or more uh, 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 fast treatment for those who pay more, okay? It's considered as unethical in, 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 many, in many places. So there is a fourth, uh, um, a fourth mechanism that we suggested in the same paper, which is just assign random priorities to customer, 
two customers, okay? So whenever there is uh, some potential arrival, he draws some random number. Okay, let me go into details for that one. So uh, whenever some customer or patient, if you think about the hospital, arrives at the hospital, he draws some random number. Uh, it could be any distribution, but let us assume just for now that it's uniform between zero and one. And this number will determine the priority of this customer. So the lower is the value of U, the higher is the priority, okay? And now the customers, they observe this randomly drawn priority parameter and now they make the decision whether or not to join the queue. So if they decide to join the queue and they assume that all those with better condition than them, uh, better uh, drawn number than them join, this will be their waiting time. As you can see, they are actually zero priority compared to all the others that had drawn uh, a better priority than them, okay? And the proportion, because we chose the uh, uh, distribution to be uniform, so the probability of drawing a lower number is zero. This is the proportion of those who overtake them, so they are zero priority according to them. Of course, all the others are transparent to them. And this is the waiting time that they will uh, actually uh, experience. So what happens in equilibrium is that we have some threshold. All those who draw below this threshold, call it UE, will join. All the others will not because this will be too high. And the equation that determines this threshold is this equation, right? The reward should be equal to the cost uh, of someone who draws this parameter. Uh, this is where uh, we have indifference, right? This is what determines <clears throat> the actual threshold. And what we can see is that this is exactly the first order condition of the social optimization problem that we described a few slides ago. So the solution of this equation is simply UE equals PS. But if we recall again that you, you, the, the priority is drawn from the uniform distribution, we get that the probability of joining or the effective arrival rate is exactly the same as the socially optimal one. And what we get here is regulation with no money transfer at all. We don't need to, to uh, establish any collection system or anything like that. Um, of course, there are more, uh, there are even more uh, yeah, advantages to that. So first of all, no money transfers, as, as I told you. Uh, another thing is that in, is, in, is insensitive to the queuing parameters, mu and lambda, you just need to draw this randomly according to any distribution of your choice and also insensitive to CNR and so on. So all that, uh, this uh, regulation and, and social optimization and equilibrium was uh, about this MM1Q with homogeneous customers. So all the customers, they had exactly the same parameters C. But as I told you at the beginning, the background story was that we have heterogeneous uh, populations. So different patients, they have different values for C. So what happens there? Let me give you a, a bit of a literature background about that. So there is a paper by Little Child in 74 uh, talking about heterogeneity with respect to R. R is a random variable. Um, the, 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 the analysis is not very different than that there will be some threshold on R, and that uh, pretty much it. Um, and if you give priority according to R, you get, uh, you get the social uh, optimization. So it regulates the system. Another paper in 79 by Balachandran and Schaeffer, um, you have K classes of customers. Every class, so each class, they have their own uh, cost parameter. So it's getting closer to what we are what we want to look at, but also different reward. Um, and what happens, or the, the phenomenon that happens here, is that if the arrival rates are high enough, we have what we call class dominance, okay? Only one class will dominate the system. And this, uh, this is the class in equilibrium, the class with the highest value for R over C. So the, the relative uh, reward to cost. Um, but in social optimization, we want a different class to dominate and so on. Also, there is a way to regulate the system by uh, using uh, random priorities within class and so on. So now for the model uh, in the last five minutes that I have for the model uh, we want to talk about. So it's exactly the same as the MM1 I described at the beginning, but now C is a continuous random variable 
with some CDFF and some PDF, uh, some the probability density function uh, F uh, in the support of uh, some lowest value and some highest value. I suppose that there are no gaps or anything like that. Very, very simple for now. Uh, okay, this is what I told you. The, the, the density is strictly positive uh, all over the, the, the support. And uh, of course, uh, the highest value for C is less than R over mu. So if the, this, the one with the highest value is the only one who considers joining or not, um, um, okay, Alex is allowing me to take 15 more minutes, so that's fine. Thank you. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, so the one with the highest value for C uh, decides uh, uh, to join if, if he's the only one in the system, okay? He, he would wait, of course, uh, one over mu and so on. This is just to avoid realities, okay? And everything else, as I told you, is as before, just n and one. Uh, with the only difference is that now C, instead of being constant, is, has some random distribution in the population. And again, the queue is unobservable, so customers need to take the decision whether or not to join without inspecting the queue first. And let us assume for now that the, uh, uh, the uh, service regime is of first come first serve. Okay, so we simply ignore the cost parameter of a customer uh, in the decision of, of priorities. Okay, so no priorities, just first come first serve. So every customer inspects his own parameter C, the medical condition set, and then decides whether or not to join the queue or whether or not to go or, or to go to the public hospital or to use the private one. Okay, uh, let me remind you the private one, the cost or the fees are, and this is also the kind of reward that you get by choosing or by electing the, the public hospital, okay? So what happens in equilibrium in that case is quite simple. Um, only those with low enough value for C will join, okay? Because if the uh, value is high, too high, well, the, 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 the cost of waiting will be too high and then I will choose to go to the private one. So there will be some threshold, CE for first come first serve, that uh, only those with lower value for this, for, for, for cost will, will join. The equation that determines this value is simply that one. We want indifference, indifference for uh, those that possess exactly this uh, value of the threshold. So, okay, so this is the equation that we will get. Of course, those, the others who will join, uh, their fraction will be F, the, the, the CDF evaluated at that point and so on. So that will be the waiting time, easy, okay? But the main difference between this model and the uh, homogeneous model is that now the social welfare or the resulting social welfare is strictly positive. So now the only uh, one that is indifferent between joining or not joining is the one that possesses exactly the threshold value for C. But all those who join and have lower value for C, they have strictly positive net utility from joining, okay? Because their waiting time is strictly less than the one at the threshold. So the resulting social welfare as opposed to the case of homogeneous customer is strictly positive, okay? So put a pin on that because we will get back to this uh, observation later. If you want to draw the same uh, picture as before, you get a very similar picture and this is what determines C. Uh, but of course you can think about now um, uh, central admission policy or social, socially optimized, uh, op optimal admission policy. If you think about it a little bit, you will uh, arrive with, uh, with the conclusion that it's supposed to be also a threshold policy, but maybe a different threshold because now we need to think about uh, a slightly different, uh, as before, slightly different objective function. I will uh, skip a little bit of that, but you can see that you get the same kind of, of uh, a phenomenon. You have the, 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 the individual cost, but also you have the externalities, they have pretty similar uh, 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 terms, but of course a bit different because of the heterogeneity with respect to C. But anyways, the, the, the graph looks almost the same, okay? Uh, 
and we see that the, the social threshold or socially optimal threshold should be less than the equilibrium threshold. Okay, this is very uh, interesting, but remind, uh, let, uh, let me remind you that we assumed first come first serve. But as we said, it makes on, no sense to use first come first serve when you have patients with different conditions. So the natural thing to, to, uh, thing to think about is, uh, well, let us give higher priority for those with higher value of C or with those worse condition, right? This is what the CMU rule will tell us to do. And the idea is that it makes no sense to make a costly customer or those who suffer more wait for those who suffer less, okay? You can just swap them and save the difference in the cost that they have between them. So as we said, you should prioritize those with higher cost. This is what the intuition tells us. But what will happen to the equilibrium behavior? So if customers decide for themselves whether or not to join, maybe this will affect their decision, okay? So as uh, we saw, the decision is uh, extremely based on the, the, the waiting, uh, uh, the expression for the waiting time. So now, if I possess a higher value for C, I will have a shorter waiting time than others, and that will, of course, make a change. So let me go very quickly uh, about uh, uh, this model and get to the conclusion. So let us start now for the social optimization. So of course, the social optimization will still be a threshold policy, okay? You still want those with a, a mild, milder condition to join the, private, the, the public hospital and send all uh, those with a, with a, a, a harsher condition to the, to the private one. And this is simply because uh, you can think about a situation where this is not a threshold policy. Uh, of course, you can maintain the same load on the system, but change the identity of the customers and, uh, or the patients and have more patients with lower value for C and then save in, in the cost. It makes no sense to, to use something other than threshold policy. And um, you just need to write a, a slightly different uh, objective function and uh, write the first order condition, solve it, and very simply get the threshold or the socially optimal threshold. So there are no news here, but the question is, okay, is this an equilibrium? Well, if that was an equilibrium, it's perfect. You can just apply the CMU rule, right? and get not only the benefit of applying it by saving the cost, as I told you, but also to achieve the socially optimal behavior for customers. But this is, of course, too good to be true, okay? There is no way that this will be an equilibrium, and not only because customers are selfish, but there is even a, a, a more a interesting reason for that, and this reason is that, well, in equilibrium, the equilibrium strategy will never be a threshold join or not join strategy, okay? This is even more, uh, a stronger result than just saying that the socially optimal strategy is not an equilibrium. So the, even the shape now is changing. Okay, I will not go over the proof of why the uh, equilibrium is not a threshold strategy, but uh, the, it's quite uh, straightforward, you just, uh, um, uh, 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 assume some threshold and see that there is some deviation, uh, uh, beneficial deviation, so uh, this is not a, a, an equilibrium strategy, okay? Um, <clears throat> so what does happen in equilibrium? So it's not a, a, a threshold strategy anymore, so we need to think about a more general strategy. So a more general strategy or the most general strategy will be to assign joining probability for each possible value for the cost, for C, okay? So the strategy is simply a function, yeah? A function <clears throat> uh, that maps the value of the cost to the probability of joining, okay? And we denote this function by PEC. And just a technical note, we need to consider only functions that are continuous almost everywhere, because if we have a different kinds, the resulting behavior will be exactly the same. I will not go into this technicality, just bear this in mind. 
And the most important thing about, or the, the, the most important result about using some joining probability function <clears throat> is this defective tail function that will give us the proportion of customers who join that have higher cost than C, some particular cost parameter, okay? So of course, if P equals one for all these values, we just get the tail function, the original tail function in the population of F. But uh, if we multiply by the probability of joining, you will get the proportion of those who have higher cost than C and actually join, okay? And this is of course a defective function or might be a defective function in case that F is uh, sometimes does, does not equal one, okay? As in the typical case. So let us think about the equilibrium now. now. So um, this is the utility of a customer with parameter, cost parameter C when everyone else is using this uh, strategy P of C. So this customer is actually a zero priority customer with respect to all those who join and have higher cost than this particular customer. So we get the same expression as we had before. Uh, the only thing is that the proportion of those who overtake me is GE of C. And the idea is as follows. In order for PE to be in equilibrium, we need the following. We need the net, so if the net utility is less than zero for this particular customer, the joining probability should be zero. Okay, and this relation is of if and only if, okay? And if the net utility is strictly positive, we need the joining probability to be one. And the only case where we allow the probability to be strictly between zero and one is where we have uh, indifference. So the net utility from joining equals exactly zero. Okay? So the first thing is the following. The first result is the following. So in equilibrium, there are no customers who choose to join with probability zero or to balk with probability one. So everyone joins with some strictly positive probability. This is kind of a surprising result, at least for me. Okay, and again, the proof is kind of technical, but if you think about it, you will arrive to the conclusion that if you have a gap or a region where the joining probability equals zero, okay, it means that someone with lower cost or with higher cost chose to join, this is where uh, uh, we, we meet the, the, the boundary of the gap, but you are in better condition than this one, so you better join, okay? Some kind of this argumentation is going on here, uh, but just uh, remember that in equilibrium, the joining probability is always strictly positive. So we can eliminate this possibility, okay, of P equals zero. So we are left with these two possibilities whether joining with probability one or joining with, one, with some strictly, uh, a, a, a probability strictly between zero and one. And the way to think about it is quite interesting. And now I will go into this graphically and then I will give, the, give you the exact expression for the equilibrium. So the idea is as follows. If you want to um, look at the condition for the probability to be strictly uh, uh, less than one, if you play with this, sorry, with this condition, you will get a condition for GE and the condition is that GE should be less than some, sorry, some function. And this is the function. Look, it depends only on the parameters of the problem. And this is what you get, okay? So you start with some uh, tail function. This is the black curve right here, okay? Denoted by F A bar. And you also add to this graph, you add the blue line, okay? And the blue line is the function that I told you before. So the effective uh, tail distribution of the joining customers should be always less than the blue line as I told you. And what happens is the following. So um, the uh, uh, effective tail distribution needs to always be less than the blue line. So you start with the one with the highest cost. And you say, okay, let's let them join with probability one, but at some point, these two curves cross each other. So if customers will uh, 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 continue to join with probability one, the effective tail distribution will be 
uh, more than the blue line or the blue curve. And that, of course, is impossible, as, as we said. So what needs to happen is that the joining probability should be something between zero and one to somehow straighten this line or make the uh, 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 black line to align with the blue line. And this is what we see here. Okay, so if we go back to the patients and their behavior, so what happens is that those patients, they choose a very particular value for P in order to make the next customers indifferent between joining or not, and also use some probability, again, very carefully selected in order to make the next ones also indifferent and so on. And this continues until the probability you need to multiply by is greater than one. And then what happens? Well, you can only join with probability one and you take or you map this uh, tail function, the black one, but you continue it from here, okay? And again, until you cross this line again and so on. So what we have here is a joining probability function that has this alternating regions where customers or patients join with probability one and join with probability strictly between zero and one. And again, one, and again, strictly between zero and one, and so on. This is very unusual equilibrium behavior uh, in this uh, area of queuing uh, uh, games, if, if you are familiar with this area. And this is what, uh, so, what is so important uh, or interesting about, about this result. But uh, let, us, let me just uh, go back to the background story. So if you think about the hospital, what will happen in the hospital is not that you will have only customers with mild condition or very severe condition, but you will have a mix, okay? Everyone will, will uh, uh, choose to go to the public hospital with some probability, okay? And those who will choose, or, or, or a fraction of those who will go to the, the private hospital will be somewhere from the middle, usually, okay? Not the most severe condition patients and not the most mild condition patients, okay? But somewhere in the middle, okay? This is very interesting, and uh, as I, uh, I, I didn't do any uh, empirical uh, work here and didn't collect any, any data, but uh, um, I talked with some people and they told me that, well, well this is uh, sometimes or very often what happens in, in private hospitals. Um, so this might be a, a nice explanation for that. And just the last thing that I want to tell you is that the, what is the effect of the arrival rate? Of the equilibrium on the equilibrium. So the dotted line here is the function that I told you that we need to be less than. And what happens here is the following, and we go over this very, very quickly. If lambda is very, very low, okay, we have the blue situation here. So the tail function is already below this function, so the probability of joining is one all the way. But if lambda is very, very high, what you get is that the probability of joining is always strictly between zero and one. And what that means, it means that all the customers or all the patients, they have zero net utility. So if you think about the social welfare or the resulting social welfare of this, in this case where lambda is very, very high, the social welfare in, in, in the orange case is strictly zero. So if you compare this to the first come first served option, where we got strictly positive uh, social welfare, no matter what, we see that in that situation, if you need to choose between first and first serve or the SIMU rule, you should go on the, and these are the only two options that you have and you cannot charge and you cannot do anything, any other regulation, like in, the, in hospitals, you should maybe choose first and first serve instead of the SIMU rule. So you should not prioritize patients with more severe condition, if that make any sense, okay? Because that will only uh, uh, make the uh, patients with most severe condition to use the more efficient facility, which is the private one. Okay, so this is it. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to to answer them. Unless we don't have any other time, so you can email me, of course. Yeah, thank you so much, Benjamin. Thank you for your interesting talk. I wish I've been there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope we have a chance. So, yeah. uh, uh, if any questions, uh, please, uh, please do ask. We have, I think we can have like five minutes for that. 
Yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, this is Udo Grieger uh, calling from Germany with the experience of hospitalization. Uh, Dr. Oz, I have one question. Uh, if a customer uh, joins or doesn't join uh, and go to the alternative, it is like a virtual overtaking. And you didn't consider any uh, overtaking metrics um, in the queue. But if I go and uh, wait in the hospital um, physically, I see this overtaking. So um, is there any research of yours or intention to look at a takeover metrics? Uh, for instance, we have studied it in Bamberg University. My coworker, Mr. Stuntman, uh, studied such a overtaking policies, um, and this could be applied to this kind of virtual overtaking as well. If you have a physical intuition, what is going on in the hospitalization cues or, or treatment cues, yeah, okay. um, yeah. and then the outcome would be relative because it would be a quality of experience metric and not just the metric from the perspective of the organizer of the queues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see exactly what you mean. Um, actually, what we consider here, or, or the more suitable uh, uh, thing to, to, to think about it regarding this model, is a non-life-threatening condition where we wait, you wait at home, okay? You just make an appointment at the hospital, but we, you wait at home, okay? And they just give you some date to go to the surgery, and you are not actually experiencing the overtaking. Of course, you know that those with most severe condition will overtake you, and this is how you make your decision, but you are not actually experiencing the overtaking, okay? But of course, it might be very, very interesting to, to, to uh, consider the, the overtaking metrics as you, you described. Also take it into the, the, the utility function. And yes. That is a very, very interesting uh, 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 development of these kind of models that I've never seen actually in, in, in this field. So I will be very happy to uh, maybe even collaborate and you can tell me a bit more about this and uh, think about this from the strategic perspective. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, any more questions? Okay, then, then I have one. Uh, yeah. If, if not, not anymore, so then I, I ask. So thank you, first of all, thank you so much for the very, very warm and very interesting talk. And uh, so my, I, basically I have two questions, maybe one, one I will address. So uh, you showed uh, the examples where the threshold type strategy works. And also you demonstrated the one, the last one, where the, the, this strategy fails. Yeah. But uh, are there any sort of conditions, maybe like the sufficient conditions on the model itself that uh, allows that the threshold type strategy to appear. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, of course, a sufficient condition would be that um, the cost is monotone in your signal. The signal in that case is, is the cost uh, of waiting. So if the function is monotone, that's fine. So uh, let me go back to that slide uh, regarding the first come first serve. And what you see here, is that the weighting itself does not depend on the cost on C, okay? Um, but um, so, so here we are considering the threshold. But if you consider a, a particular customer, where uh, in the situation where all the others are using some threshold, so the threshold here will be fixed, and the only thing that you play with is this coefficient of C, okay? And that then you get just a monotone function as a function of C, and this is why there is some cutoff. Uh, in, the, in the middle, and that will give you uh, the, the threshold. But what happens in the situation of the CMU rule is that you have both expressions depend on C, okay? So here, C here, as well as here, they, all, they, they both change, okay? This is the utility for someone with a cost parameter of C, not for the one with the threshold. So this expression, the waiting time decreases with C because we prioritize those with higher value for C and C increases with, uh, obviously with C itself, right? So this is why we get this kind of uh, uh, oscillation or I don't remember this word. Anyways, this wave behavior of the, of the joining 
uh, uh, here. And this is also the reason why we don't have threshold because there is no monotonicity, that's it. Okay? Yeah, yeah, it's good. And, and what, just, just a short, a short um, uh, question. So what if we don't know this expression, let's say for the waiting time exactly? I mean, for, for instance, you demonstrated this is an M and one Q, right? Yeah. So here we have these nice expressions, but what if we don't? So uh, do we have any chance to analyze these type of models? Yeah, so I guess that qualitatively, nothing will change if you change the service uh, uh, distribution to some general distribution. Um, but uh, to get a specific expressions, I, I, get that, I, I guess that numerically you can do that, okay? But again, for the simplicity of the model, because you don't lose almost anything qualitatively, I think that the, the, the better way to address this analytically will be to use the M1 instead of MG1. Um, but who knows, maybe there are some mysteries uh, around the general service time. Okay, in the other paper that I mentioned in 2018, uh, we addressed this uh, uh, issue, what happens if the service is, is, is not uh, exponential. And what we got there is that if you use this random priority uh, uh, um, uh, method, you will always, you are gonna guaranteed to have at least two thirds of the socially optimal welfare. So this is, I guess this is some kind of uh, uh, result that you might have here as well, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thanks again. Okay, thank you, thank you for